Hi, good morning, Gray Center. I'm happy to bring you the thought of the day today. I've been thinking a lot the last couple of weeks about comfort and uh, just how important being able to receive comfort from the Lord is. Uh, and now obviously in pondering that, I've also pondered the fact that I haven't actually been great at receiving comfort at different seasons of my life because I haven't actually wanted to feel my feelings. And if you don't want to feel your feelings, then it's hard to receive comfort. Um, so I've been pondering that a lot. And Alan and I have been talking a lot about feelings and things like that. Um, but I've been looking at some verses and I wanted to share a couple of them with you this morning and just sort of maybe challenge our hearts a little bit that, that the Lord wants to meet us in a different way this season, if we'll let him. Um, but it may involve actually feeling stuff and it may involve, uh, not self comforting, but actually letting him comfort. So that's actually one of my first thoughts was, wow, it's amazing how quickly, uh, I can turn to self-comfort, like I I love crunchy food. And when I feel sad or I want comfort, I will often just be like, you know what I need is chips. I just need something crunchy and then I'm gonna be fine. Um, and of course that fine lasts about as long as the bag of chips does. And then uh, I'm looking for something else that will bring me comfort. Now the thing is, we're all wired to need comfort. As much as we maybe don't even like that piece of information, you need comfort. You're wired to need comfort because comfort will actually, the need for comfort will actually drive you towards intimacy. It will drive you towards talking to Jesus, talking to the Holy Spirit, sitting with the Father and hearing their hearts for you. So let's look at a couple of verses and then we'll talk for another minute or so and then we'll be done. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to look at is um, Isaiah 61. Uh, verses two and three, we're just gonna start there. It says, uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And if you remember, um, this particular passage is the passage that Jesus stood up and read in Nazareth. And then he said, today, this is fulfilled in your midst. I think that's in Luke. And so Jesus is saying, I am the one that brings comfort. Well, here's the thing. In order to receive comfort, you actually have to feel your feelings and then go and have a conversation, which usually is the part we don't excel at. Maybe you're great at it. Maybe it's just me. I want to read you another verse or two. In John 14, verse 16, it says, uh, it's Jesus speaking, and it's his final conversation with the disciples before he actually goes to the cross. And so he's talking to them about the role of the Holy Spirit. And he says to them, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate, also meaning counselor or comforter, uh, to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So you actually have the very spirit of comfort because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He's the comforter because we need comfort, because we need to be able to feel what we feel and go to him and say, oh, I need comfort. I feel like I'm not okay right now. Would you come and comfort me? And of course he will because it's his role, it's his job. Um, let's just, Let's end with this, 2 Corinthians 1, verses three to four. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves have been comforted by God. Whether you relate best to Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. They're all comforting. They're all, they all, that's all their role is to bring you comfort. 
And so I just want to encourage you that if you are having a hard time, you're having a hard day, maybe it's not like all week long, uh, but maybe you're just having a hard moment, turn to the Lord and talk to him about your need for comfort. Now, it probably means you're going to have to feel your feelings, but that's okay because God's safe. And I just want to encourage you with one final thought. When I was in Israel last month, uh, I can't believe it was last month. It feels like forever ago. Um, but when I was in Israel last month, uh, we went to one of my favorite places, which is Capernaum. And while we were there, our wonderful guide said, do you know what Capernaum means? And I said, no. And she said, it means village of comfort. And I just was so rocked by that. I thought about it for days because Jesus actually based his entire ministry out of the village of comfort. So I encourage you, turn to the Lord with all of your stuff, your good stuff, your bad stuff, your real stuff, and let him meet you where you're at because actually he wants to be a part of every moment and he wants to help you with how you're feeling and he wants to help you with your day. So have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.